all of you again. Welcome on this lovely Saturday morning. And uh, we want to continue our teach time from Nehemiah chapter 8. And today's uh, message I want to share with you is on return to the Word. Return to the Word of God. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, the first part of it says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Then in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. When we look at the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, as I read it continuously yesterday in preparation for our message today, I kept on seeing how the word of the Lord was reestablished within the nation of Israel. In Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah calls on Ezra, the priest, to come and read the law of the Lord. That means at that stage, the law was the word of the Lord to the people. It was referring to the law of Moses. Now down throughout the centuries, we have seen different cycles where the word of the Lord was neglected throughout the generation and this influenced the spiritual condition of the people. Where there was a lack of the word, there became a poorer spiritual condition of the people. During the time of the Reformation, there was a move towards causing a revival around the word of the Lord. In, those, in the time of the Reformation, the Catholic Church focused on the priest only knowing the word and sharing the word. And so we had other reformers like John Wycliffe and William Tyndale that labored to translate the word of the Lord into common English. Martin Luther translated the Bible into German. John Calvin began to preach expository sermons. That means sermons in layman's language so that people could understand. Whenever there is a famine of the word, whenever there is a poor or a neglect of the word of the Lord, the people suffer. And so today, this is our challenge. Our challenge is let's return to the word. Now in Nehemiah chapter 8, the Bible says when the people were all one and together that Ezra started to read the law. Now I want to challenge us that there is a few things that we need to do in our returning to the word. Firstly, we have to read the word. Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 3 said, And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Now, when I read this portion of scripture, I saw that the people of God were all standing for the reading of the word and they stood from morning to midday, over six hours. They stood listening to the reading of the word, not even the preaching of the word, the reading of the word. That, and the Bible said that they were attentive to the book of the law. Paul instructs Timothy to give attention in church meetings to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation and teaching in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13. There was something that was important that the word of God had to be read. Part of our own development and part of your own development, you have to read the word of the Lord. When you read the word of the Lord, it begins to produce faith, cause your faith to increase. In this time, in any time of crisis, in any time of self-doubt, in any time when you feel like you need to be strengthened, read the word. 
Now, I remember our parents continuously teaching us this when we were younger. And we often, you know, when you're young, you try to avoid every form of reading. But the reality is that the reading was not for their benefit. The reading of the word is for your benefit. And so today I want to challenge you, read the word. You don't have to read large contents of the word, but read a scripture at a time, allowing the, the Lord to speak to you. But then the next thing was, they have to hear the word. Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 8 says, So he read the book of the law of God distinctively and gave the sense and caused them to have understanding of the reading. Now we understand that not only reading the word is important, it is hearing the word. The more we hear the word, the more our faith is built up. In Mark chapter 4, verses 9, Jesus said, Let him that have ears, let him hear the word of the Lord, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Now this is very important. It seemed like it should be natural if you have ears, you can hear. But we know that is, that is far from the truth. How often have sometimes you spoken to your children? And you have called them and you speak to them and says, go and do this, put your dish, your, your, your supper dishes in the sink. And they have ears, but they don't hear you because their focus is somewhere else. How many times have people told you things and, and or your wife spoken to you and you and you she and, and in your hearing, but because you were focused elsewhere, you did not hear. And then when she asks you later, you say, no, I didn't hear you. So having ears is not a presumption that we all are hearing. But I like how the Greek puts it because he says, he that has ears, physical ears, let him hear. That second ear is the word that comes, which means hupakoa, which basically means to bring yourself in obedience to what you heard. So the reality is if we read that scripture from the reference of the original text, it says that let him that has an ear bring himself under the obedience to what he heard. Now that changes everything. That means how many times do we hear something and allow what we hear to influence our actions? This is what, when you, the Bible says, when we hear the word being preached, we should now put the word in action. We should do, bring ourselves in obedience to what we're hearing. Today you are hearing, let's return to the word of the Lord. Let's read the word of the Lord. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Now, as you apply it into your life, you bring yourself in, into relation to, hear, to doing what the word has spoken. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8 verse 18, Take care of how you listen, for who has, to him that shall be, to who has, to him shall be given more, and to whoever does not have, even that which he thinks he has will be taken away from him. Attentiveness to the word of God stems from a point of reverence. Thirdly, the word of God must be taught. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, to 11, 10 and 11, he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is a holy day unto the Lord. Neither be he sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people and said, Hold your peace, for this is a holy day, neither to be grieved. When, the, when we read here, when the people of God heard the reading of the law, they became, became saddened. Saddened because they ha of how much they did not know. Saddened because of how much they haven't been applying to their lives. That's what happens when the word of God is taught to you, 
you uh, you become more aware of the things that you do not know and should know and when you apply it it can bring a change to your life the people were sad and and, and, and Nehemiah's encouragement to them is for the joy of the Lord is your strength may, may God strengthen you through the word as you pursue the word of God may God strengthen you sound biblical teaching must be accurate clear and applied to your life. You cannot just hear the word. You cannot just know the word. You have to apply the word to your life. The apostles, even the apostles in Acts chapter 4, the Bible says they devoted themselves to prayer and to the study of the word of God. Anybody that is worth or teaches or preaches or encourages others should be a student of the word of God. Nehemiah understood that he was a, a skillful organizer. But when it came to the word, he brought in Ezra to teach the word to the people. Be aware and learn how to mobilize people that have different strengths to you. This is an excellent example of team-based ministry. He brought in Ezra, to stud, uh, who studied the word, to teach it so that the people could practice the word. Lastly, when you, after you read the word, heard the word, the word is taught, you have to practice. You must respond to the word of God. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 15, they published and proclaimed in all the cities, saying, Go forth to the mount of the Lord, fetch olive branches, pine branches, myrtle branches, palm branches, branches thick of thick trees to make boots as it were written. So the people went forth and brought them and made of, of themselves boots, every one upon the roof of his house and in the courts and the courts of his house. And now when I looked at this portion of scripture, when they heard what was required, for the feast that they were about to celebrate, they went and practiced what was said. Now this is important. We cannot just hear the word, but we have to respond to it. The Bible speaks about us that spiritually it is dangerous for us to study the word without the goal of being obedient to the word of God. Knowledge apart from obedience leads to pride. Today we are challenged to read the word of God, to respond to the word of God. Do what the word tells you to do. In this time, the word, the Bible says, be encouraged in the word of the Lord. The scripture says this, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I pray today that the word of the Lord will become central in your experience, in your growth, and in your life. That today you will take up the challenge to read your Bible more regularly. Read the word. And I, I can assure you as you read it, may the Holy Spirit begin, give you clarity, give you understanding, and may you grow in your faith and in your walk with God. Would you join with me? For a word of prayer. Father, we are mindful, O oh God, of your hand upon our lives. We are mindful of the many times we have failed, the many times that we have not applied your word into our hearts. I thank you that your word speaks into every season of our lives, and even in this season, in the season of crisis, in the season of this pandemic. Father, I pray may the word of the Lord encourage and build your people. I pray, O Lord, as they read the word of the Lord, may strength come to them. May they increase in faith. May they see the evidence of the word working in their lives, as it has worked in the lives of many before. Father, may they become a revival around the word of the Lord. In the world today that today Lord we pray just for your guidance 
just for your intervention. We pray for healing for those, of oh God, that are not well. We pray, oh God, for just a strong mind and a sense for those that are lonely and, and those that are struggling, oh God. I pray today that you would show up in their lives. For those that are going through economic difficulties at this time, you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And so today we, we ask that you would show yourself strong in the lives of your people. Bless your people, Lord. Cause them to grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for our time of teaching of the word and also communion. Good day and have and be blessed. Amen.